Hello everybody, Anima Central and welcome on board a Trent Barton Comet B7R Elite in Chesterfield. It is currently half seven in the morning. Yes, me and Henry, Henry who's here, are a bit bonkers. It is a Saturday morning. It was the only one that worked out with the trains that we were getting and worked out for a smooth connection. In this video, it's one of um, two that I'm filming today, so there is going to be another Trent Barton video coming out very soon. Um, we're going to take a little look at one of my all-time favourite bus services, the Red Arrow, that runs up to every 10 minutes using coaches exclusively between Derby and Nottingham. Um, there's a few interesting things about the coaches themselves, and a bit of interesting history on that. And the route that we're currently on, sat in Chesterfield, does have a little bit of reference as well. Thus why I'm starting the video off here, as this does link to the Red Arrow story. So what we're going to do, we're going to set off, it is a bit dark outside, but I'm going to try and show you some of the views as we leave Chesterfield. And then in a little bit I'll explain to you why the Comet has a little bit of a relevance to the history of the iconic Red Arrow service. So Trent Barton has run for quite a long time now. in between Claycross and Alpherton um, on the route. Alpherton sort of in the halfway mark on the bus service. The Comet itself um, used to run every 30 minutes. It was cut back um, at the beginning of last year to an hourly service, the PVR being free. So the route takes about an hour and five minutes each end, 65 minutes each way. So there's always usually one bus laying over in Derby, in Derby bus station while sort of the rotation goes round. So the bus that we're currently on is 748, it was recently refurbished, as you can see with the yellow sort of seat heads and the newer Trent Barton seating. However, this route, the Comet, as I said, does have some relevance to the Red Arrow. With the old sort of Derby to Chesterfield route via Alpherton that this currently does used to be part of the Red Arrow network. When it used to run over half an hour, um, the Red Arrow used to still run as it does now every 10 minutes between Nottingham and Derby with one coach every 30 minutes used to extend up to Chesterfield via Alpherton. That's basically what this bus service took over. So I thought it was an applicable place to start this video, obviously because I had to catch the route anyway, um, but because it does have some relevance to the Red Arrow network, with this being one of the old sections of the previous route. As I say, now for the past couple of years, it's been its own standalone service with these B7R Lees, whilst the Red Arrow got upgraded and has kept seeing coaches introduced onto the service. So it was a little bit of a downgrade for this section of the route, however with the Comet being a stopper service stopping quite regularly um, between Ripley and Chesterfield, it runs sort of more direct from Ripley into Derby. It does mean that these buses are probably a bit more suited to the route rather than conventional coaches, that's what um, the Red Arrow now uses. Now going more on to General Trent Barton, little bits like this I love. You will have noticed Transdev have a very similar concept. This is where they got it from. As Trent Barton was sort of, is, is very much the inspiration for a lot of things that Transdev are doing with quite a lot of management moving from Trent Barton to Transdev and now running that company instead. So you notice the sort of standard seating is similar. Little things like these tags are quite similar. And well, one thing that is disappointing to say that this bus was refurbished quite recently is the lack of any USB ports on the vehicle. And none that I can see anyway on the back seat. Um, I don't know if there's any under the seat, so we'll have a little investigation. But from what I can see, there are no USBs on this bus. It is a little bit of a shame to say it is such a key corridor route um, linking Derbyshire um, and Derby itself to Chester. Thank you. So here we are now in Derby. And we're going to head over to the Red Arrow stand and to go on hopefully the next Red Arrow over to Nottingham. So 
So now it's time for the Red Arrow. It is still quite early in the day, so the buses and all the coaches are every 20 minutes up until 9. But as you can see from 9am, they do become every 10 minutes. And we've got one of the lovely 65 Regis triaxles. So we'll jump on with the ticket and then we'll see what all the features are about inside. So we're all plugged in, um, unfortunately it doesn't seem to work in that well, I'm going to try another one to see if it works. Now the difference between sort of these Red Arrow coaches and conventional coaches is the seating layout and the actual coaches themselves. Usually with coaches you tend to find that they have manual gearboxes to help them through the gears and things like motorways. However these ones from my understanding are automatic boxes, so they are out, just drive pretty much like a bus. Um, and it makes it easier for drivers and um, this idea that they are stop starting rather than doing these long end sort of country end to end runs. We've also got Henry here that's going to demonstrate, we are sat on the back but he's going to demonstrate the fact that they do recline back to the seats. I'm also told by him that they are supposed to recline back and he hasn't broken it. Um, but they do have lovely armrests as well as you can see, lovely armrests and although the seats are looking a little bit tired as these buses are going or these coaches are going on about six years old the seats are still relatively comfy and it's still a very nice atmosphere on board. So we've got this over to Nottingham and hopefully by the time we get to Nottingham it will have actually gone light as it seems to have been quite dark for quite a while although I think it's partly because it is still raining outside. So we've commenced the journey now on the A52 straight across to Nottingham um, and a few little features I'd like to show you when the coaches are in motion. As you'll notice the lights have dimmed slightly and these dim um, obviously to make it easy for the driver to sort of see where they're going and then also dim um, whilst the vehicle is in motion when the doors open the lights sort of brighten so you can see where you're sitting but then when you're commuting they do sort of darken up so you can relax or dim up should I say so you can relax a little bit more without the intense light hitting you. Alongside that if you need to see where you're going there is um, floor lighting in a lovely red livery to sort of complement the Red Arrow brand. Alongside this is also all the different toggle features um, that you can mess with in regarding your own personal lighting. Now although you can't, you can't shift the lighting itself, the lighting does allow you sort of your own personal nightlife. You need to pull the table down for example, um, there we go like that, and do some writing or potentially put your drink in the cup holder. So there are a lot of nice features on this and the route itself takes about 40 to 50 minutes um, to get from Derby to Nottingham. Um, it's a nice way to do it um, as it is sort of very much a non-stop route. It goes from Derby, stops at QMC and then goes into Nottingham Centre and so there's a few stops in the central area of the city. So it's a nice way to do it. Um, the Red Arrow sort of coaches and things was something they did initially want to introduce on the city's app service between Leeds and York before they decided on getting the MMCs. They did trial a few coaches, they tried a Triaxle Turismo and I believe a couple of others, but found that the city's app service between Leeds and York is not suited to this because this sort of Red Arrow service tends to only have a few stops. Meanwhile, the city's app, especially between um, Askham Bar, that's the park and ride, and York Centre does stop a fair few times that would have made a coach a bit unsuitable for the route. Nevertheless though, um, Trent Barton definitely pulled it off on this route um, and when these coaches were introduced at the end of 2015 and um, that was when they decided to curtail the Red Arrow to only focus on Derby to Nottingham as these coaches themselves, although very very fancy, would have been a little bit unsuitable um, for the sort of Chesterfield part of the route. So we're just setting off now but that is Queen's Medical Centre campus and um, that's one of the university, that's University Hospital in Nottingham. It is the only intermediate stop on the Red Arrow between Derby um, Centre and Nottingham Centre and it serves there because it is quite a busy hub not just for connecting bus services but for the um, hospital site itself. 
So it does mean that we are now in Nottingham and um, we're making our way slowly along the road, not as quick as the A52, but slowly along the road with a few other buses around us into Nottingham Centre. Thank you. Yes, so here we are now in Nottingham in the Victoria Centre, um, the bus station. There used to be two bus stations, there used to be this and Broadmarsh. However, Broadmarsh um, closed a few years ago um, and they demolished it for redevelopment. So this coach has always stopped here. It serves um, one or two stops in Nottingham Centre and then terminates here with this coach now moving on to its correct stand of its departure in about 10 minutes time. So the Victoria bus station itself is based on the northern end. You get sort of services like Pronto here, Sherwood Arrow. We did see a Pronto earlier actually. Um, services like that. So what we're going to do is we've got a few other stuff to do today as we are on a zigzag ticket. And we'll see you later on in the afternoon for another trip um, back over to Derby on another lovely Red Arrow coach. So we're walking back into Victoria bus station now, the Northern bus station in Nottingham. Um, as it, it, it's more the, it's a little bit more of the depressing side of the city. Nottingham is a city that is currently still in regeneration and there's parts of the city still undergoing work. And Victoria bus station hopefully is one of those areas that's going to see a bit more work done to it. The weather has also improved, it's lighter now um, and we're making our way around to the Red Arrow stand. Um, for what should be the every 10 minutes Red Arrow and back to Derby. Despite the fact that there isn't one in at the moment, hopefully there's going to be one arriving in very soon. Luckily stand one is here um, and they do run, as it says here, on a Saturday every 10 minutes so there shouldn't be um, a long wait till the next one arrives. Hello, you all right? Good you. I'm good, thank you. Good, thank you. What's quite nice about doing this run um, back sort of around midday around 1 or 2 pm ish is unlike the trip that we did this morning we get to witness the routes sort of during the day um, because usually routes like this if you're commuting on them you can get them early morning then a peak time and that's it and you, you it's sort of it's usually quite um, difficult to end up on a ride on them at midday but without today's being structured and the fact we're on a zigzag ticket and um, that we're going to zigzag quite literally across the Trent Barton network. It means that we can sample this route during the day. I'll still get Henry here. Yeah. Hiya. He's still here. Um, and we're just making our way. We've just stopped, um, I believe, at the QMC bus stop. As you can hear, um, the doors are opening. The lights, um, I believe, have gone a little bit brighter um, because they do brighten when the door opens and then dim again um, to allow sort of passengers to relax, as I discussed this morning. Um, and what's quite nice, again, um, a difference in seating. We've sat in the middle of the coach this time. With COVID restrictions and things still being minorly in place, the front row of seats, unfortunately, like the, the best seats in the house, as most people would call them, are currently um, not in use. So, and we thought we'd sit in the middle. Got the lovely curtains here, and um, they work perfectly because the Red Arrow service is 24 hours. So if you do catch this at about 1am in the morning, 2am, you've got your curtains here as well. So, 
We've also got quite a lot of legroom and um, we've decided to sit in the um, seat by the emergency exit. As usually when you're on buses, coaches, the seat by the emergency exit, because it is quite a wide door, is usually provides a bit more legroom. So just a little, little tip there for if you are um, traveling on a longer distance trip. If you sit by the fire and fire exit door, you tend to get a bit more legroom. So we're going to make our way now, we're making our way into the A52, um, leaving Nottingham. I'll show you a few more views as we make our way over to Derby. Thank you. Here we go, we're back in a very, very sunny um, Derby. A very, very nice trip. Got one of the lovely pocket timetable things that they've made, because they don't do big timetables, they do pocket guys to make it easy for people. Um, and that was coach number 85. I'm going to pass back into the office now where I'll do a little sum up. We'll have a little look through this timetable um, properly. Um, and I'll tell you what I thought the service and where you can find similar runs um, like the Red Arrow. So now for the end summary. Now to sum up the Red Arrow service, it's currently run by Trent Barton. It's been run by them a few decades now between Derby and Nottingham. There are 10 coaches for the service, nine of which are Volvo B11 RT Plaxton Elites, that are the Traxels that we sampled in this video. And there is also an FJ10 Reg, um, numbered 75, that is an old Scania Irisa i4. The previous coaches on the service. That one has stayed on to sort of make up the um, peak vehicle requirements needed. The route itself runs every 10 minutes throughout the day. It runs at that frequency during peaks throughout the day into the evening peak. Early mornings on Saturdays and quieter times every 20 minutes. And then over the sort of late nights. Depending on, on what day of the week it is, it either runs a mix of um, hourly to half hourly frequency or up to every 20 minutes if it's a Friday and Saturday night. The service itself was incredibly impressive. To say the bus, the coaches, the um, newer ones on there that were sampled were new in 2015 and um, they are still in a lovely condition. The seats are incredibly comfortable and all of the features do make it feel like you are travelling in, in a very, very elite class. Um, that is a nice feeling, especially if, even with it just being a short commuter run. The coaches as well being automatic are quite unique to travel and it's quite a unique experience. And they do a really good job on the service. It is a relatively flat route along the A52, so there's not that many challenges for them. But even then, they still cope incredibly well. The customer service, as you will have heard in this video, is, is just absolutely amazing. All the drivers are really friendly, really friendly staff. Easy to sort of manage timetables, little pocket guide timetables that they do. So you can literally just put it in your pocket or put it in your wallet, for example. And they do your day working and then find out when your coach is returning. The only issue with this and route though is because it goes on the A52 and they are coaches is you can't have standing passengers. So at peak times, they probably do get a bit busy and you probably will have to wait um, sometimes potentially um, for the next one behind. But apart from that, um, very, very nice vehicles. And I imagine the new longer tracks are ones that they now have run in the service helps to ease capacity issues. It's a service I do recommend going on. Um, they have similar routes um, up and down the country. It's like if you go to Scotland, it's the same idea of coaches doing normal stopping and local express bus services. And then in London, you've got the Oxford Tube between Oxford and London with a very similar concept behind it. As I say, though, I really hope you've all enjoyed this video. I hope you found it interesting. Do keep sending in your suggestions for video ideas and things. And if you did enjoy this video, do be sure to hit that like button so that more people can find it and enjoy like you have. And if you haven't already, do subscribe to the And More Central YouTube channel on YouTube for more content like this. Um, from the real life and sort of simulation um, and even preservation side of the public transport world. Once again, I'd like to thank you all for watching and I will see you all in the next video I make. Goodbye for now. Bye.